Hi guys, welcome to the management of files and folders. It's actually a very easy lesson. There's nothing too complicated here. Hopefully you'll pick up a couple of tips on how to work with files and folders. So let's have a look. When I talk about a file, I can also refer to the properties and the attributes of a file. For example, I can refer to what type of file it is, what the size of the file is, if it is hidden or visible, or if it is a read-only file. Here we have an example of a Word, uh, sorry, not a Word document, a RTF file, rich text format, okay? It's got the W on because it's a word processing document. Word will open it, but um, there you can see I have, so what I do is I right click on that file, right click on the file, and I will then have a context sensitive menu. And in my menu that comes up, you will notice right at the bottom, I've got an area there that says properties. So that allows me to see the various properties of this file. Let's have a look and see what sort of properties can we see about this RTF file called recipe for goulash. I like a goulash. I don't actually know what goulash is. I think it's like a, I think it's like a stew. It's like a, a stew of some kind. I'm going to make goulash like tomorrow, without a doubt. I, now I'll take photos. Well, let's see. What else are we looking at? So at the top here, we have all of our tabs. We've got the general tab, security, details, previous versions. We can see all the bits of information about the file by going through those various tabs. Here is where I see the type of file. Here I can see it's a rich text format file, RTF. So that is like a text file, but it can have formatting contained in it, like colors, font size, font face, a picture, objects like, uh, and objects like, um, graphic objects and things like that. Okay, so that means that I can actually save this as an RTF file and it will keep that formatting, not like a normal text file. Okay, there I can see what the size of the file is. Okay, and at the bottom you'll see that there is my read-only attribute and that is checked. If I put a check on that, if I tick that box and I say read only, that means that I cannot save any changes to this file. I'll have to save it as another file or with another name or a version number or something like that. I can also make it hidden. I can make it hidden. That means that if I make that hidden, that when I open that folder that this file is in, I will not see it. It will be invisible which is pretty cool. And you need to know then how to show hidden files in order to see them. And if you do show hidden files, you'll notice there, it'll look something like this. There you can see I've got two folders and two normal files. I've got a doc file and an RTF file. There is a copy and you'll notice that that copy was slightly faded out, okay? Have a look slightly faded out. That means that it is a hidden file that has been hidden, okay? What else can we see? Here you can see we have the docx file, right? So I'm looking at the docx file. Here I've got a lot more metadata. That's the word I want you to remember in terms of uh, file properties. Here I can go to details. I can see there's authors, uh, last saved by revision number, version number, program name, when it was created, how long it took to work on. All right, I can have all of this information stored in the metadata of a file. So if you're going to hand in a Microsoft Word document to me and you've been working on it, I will be able to tell how long you have spent working on that document. If I scroll down a little bit more, I can see there it's got pages, the word count, the character count, the line count. It's great. I've got all kinds of information telling me about this uh, file that you've worked on. All right, so that is another bit of the properties of a file and folder. There you can see size, date created, modified, accessed. It's crazy, absolutely crazy. What about protecting our documents, all right, especially with passwords? If you want to protect a document with a password, now it's very easy with Microsoft Word or Excel or PowerPoint. Most of the Microsoft applications work the same way. And you will see that when you go to the info, so you click on file, you go to info, and you'll see there it says encrypt with password, encrypt with password. So I can go and then click on that and I can type in a password that I will force people to enter before they can open the file. All right, you can actually have two different passwords, by the way, on a file. You can have a, uh, a password that when they open it, they have to type in a password, or you can allow them to open it and if they try and make changes 
all right? Then they have to enter in a password to make changes. So you can really beef up your security on your documents. But this is just for password detection on, on Office applications, okay? Importing files, importing files. So guys, in the older days, we'd actually have a file import feature in most of our applications. Nowadays, so much integrates so easily that Office applications can actually just open files and automatically do the importing for you. So what is importing? Importing is just bringing a file in from another type of file or another program and bringing it into your current program. All right, so how do we import a file? Well, we go to file, we go open, all right, there it is, we say open, and then you will notice on a couple of things. So for example, in Word, if I go file open, and I choose, have a look there, all the kinds of files that I can actually open or import using Microsoft Word. We got Word documents, Word macro enable documents, XML files, much older Word documents, look at that, 97 to 2003, I mean, Heck, I don't think some of you were even born then. Web pages, templates, what else? Uh, text files, open document text files, PDF documents, very handy. So that's the top part there. Look at the bottom part, the Excel section. There you can see these are all the various things we can open up with Excel. So we've got all the Excel files, XML files again, text files, data sources, all kinds of database sources. I don't even know half of those things. Right, but you can see that actually to import something is super easy nowadays. You just go file, open, go and find the file that you're looking for. Make sure that you choose all files though. Do you see that all files is highlighted there? Choose all files, okay. Exporting, so exporting a document means taking your document, your file, and uh, exporting it into a way that is readable by another program or by somebody else on another system somewhere. All right, so here is the easiest way to export something, all right. File export. Create PDF or XPS document. PDF we know, portable document format. XPS, Microsoft's version of PDF. Or you could do change the file type. So export this as a different type of file altogether. This is very, <clears throat> excuse me, this is very important to know that you can actually go ahead and export a file into a different format. For example, here in Microsoft Word on the left hand side, you've got change file type and you've got documents, you've got older versions there, Word 97 to 2003. So that is great. If someone has a version of Microsoft Word that is very old and you've got a version that is quite new, and you want to send them a file, you can export your file as a Word 97 to 2003 document. And that means it'll be compatible with their version. That's very important to know, all right. And there's other types there as well. On the right there, have a look at the Excel features. Again, very similar to Microsoft Word. So just know, guys, when you want to export a file, you've got the PDF function, okay, if you just want them to look at it, Great, PDF is perfect, standardized across all the world, it's awesome. But if you want them to be able to edit or work with it in a particular program, then you choose change file type, and then they can choose what you want for maximum compatibility. Compressing and decompressing files. Okay, so this is where I find a lot of students get confused, and I'm not sure why, so I'm going to try and explain it to you in a nice way, all right? So compressing and decompressing. So you must already be thinking, okay, compress means to squash, and then decompress means to unsquash. I don't know if unsquash is a word, but it is now. So here are some of the words or terms that you're going to be uh, have to get used to, all right? So we've got compress, we've got decompress, zip is another one, unzip is another one, or even the word extract. So compress, decompress, zip, unzip, extract. These are some of the words that we use to describe squashing or unsquashing files, and I'm gonna explain what that squashing is all about. Now you may or may not have heard of a program called WinZip. WinZip was like, it, it was around forever, okay? Before you guys were born, trust me. And it was the industry standard for zipping up files, compressing files into one, and uncompressing, decompressing. 
extracting, unzipping, whatever you want to call it. WinRAR, another program which also compresses files. 7-Zip, another program that also compresses files. And, of course, the standard built-in zip technology or compression technology that comes with Windows 10 is just basic zipping. Okay, we call it zip. And there it's got an icon. That's the icon from Windows 10. It's called a zip. Okay, so let's see what that actually means. So here you can see I have data files folder. I've got a new folder and I've got two Word documents. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take these files. There it is there. And I'm going to right click on the one file and I'm going to say send to compress zipped folder. I'm showing you the quickest, easiest way to do this on a Windows 10 machine. Okay, so that's what I've done. I have, I went to the file that I needed to compress. I right clicked on the file. I went to send to and I chose zipped compressed folder. Now let's have a look at what that did. So there is my original file. There it is there. There's the exam that was 538 kilobytes. Underneath it, you can see there's the compressed file. I've now compressed that file down and made it smaller. It is now 488 kilobytes, and that's the compressed size. So that's the one thing that zipping a file does. It squashes the file down to decrease the size of the file. Really good for backing up and sending to people if the if you don't have a lot of uh, broadband for space. Okay, let's have a look at the next thing. Now, how about compressing multiple files into one file? That was another use of uh, zipping or compression. Was taking a whole bunch of files. There you can see I've selected a whole bunch. Send to compress zipped folder. Okay. And it's made an end. I'm just going to rename that quickly. I'm going to rename that. Okay, data.zip. Now, have a look at that. I've got one zip file, but inside that zip file, I have got all of those files that I put in there. So a zip file can also hold more than one file. So you can zip up everything. So think about packing a lot of things into a suitcase to go away somewhere. It's like that. It's just stacking everything in the suitcase and squashing it down. Okay, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So there you can see, I have, I'm looking at the data folder, or oh, sorry, folder, the data file. There it is, there, data, zip, okay? And you can see uh, there are a couple of clues here that tell me that I'm looking inside a zip file. The first one is if I look at my ribbon, my tab says compressed folder tools, and I have an option there that says extract all. That's my first clue that I'm actually inside a zip file. So don't think we're looking at just normal files and folders, yeah? They're actually been compressed. The second clue is in my address bar. The path over there shows me data files data.zip, so I know I'm inside a zip file. My third clue is in my headings over there. You'll see that the fields, the fields at the top there, I've got a name type size, compressed size, and there's also a ratio column as well. That's showing me that I have actually compressed these files. I am currently inside a zip file. Okay, so please don't get confused. If you double click on a zip file and it opens up like this, okay, we haven't unzipped, we haven't extracted, we haven't decompressed. So don't work with those, whatever you do. All right. How do we do? How do we do that? How do we then work with those files? Well, it's actually pretty easy, guys. Watch this. So you right click, there it is there, right click on the file, on the zip file, extract all, extract all. And what it will do is, this is uh, the standard Windows 10 extraction feature, and you can say, right, extract it there. You can say, show me the files if, if you wanna see the files after you've extracted or not. And there you can see, have a look, there is my folder that it has now extracted that file into. And there is the extracted file, now I can work with that file. I don't touch the zip file, all right? Zip file is actually a good backup.